Okay. <clears throat> so, hello and welcome. Uh, my name is Miroslav. Uh, my base station is ST Microelectronics. And I'm a member of uh, RF team focusing on WB and WBA products, so Bluetooth Low Energy Microcontrollers. Uh, this presentation is purely RF. Uh, we will discuss uh, radio module topics mainly, focused on antenna part. So anyone interested, uh, stay here for a while. Nothing? Yeah. Uh, we will deal with the radio modules. Uh, they are popular today and uh, their portfolio is uh, constantly growing today. Uh, we will touch their advantages uh, and disadvantages uh, as well. You can get uh, a better picture if this is a beneficial for you or not. Uh, radio module is a complete solution that integrates all the parts you need for wireless communication simply packed into a small uh, device uh, and it is easily assembled to your board and you don't, know, you don't care about uh, hardware internal structure. Even the stick is ready to use. Uh, is it already certified? So it is the fastest way to get uh, the device to the market. Uh, but it could have uh, also some usage constraints. Uh, let's say on the RF performance is uh, uh, limited if wrongly applied. The reason for impacting RF performance uh, is mainly the antenna. The antenna must fit into a small space in the module. Uh, it can suffer from its small size. Now we will deal with RF parameters and performance of embedded uh, antenna while application of the module differs from the recommended conditions. All the results will be demonstrated on 3D simulation model of the module fitted on a reference board. So let's talk about uh, advantages. The certification process is short in time and less cost than for discrete solution. One of the demands is the proper implementation of radio uh, or radio module according to the installation guide of the manufacturer. One of the demands is the, let's say, sorry, correct? Uh, yeah, uh, the module is pre-certified. It means that uh, not only reducing the cost uh, and time for certification, but the development time as well. You may avoid several rounds due to design mistakes that could be done with a discrete solution. Uh, testing a radio module with embedded antenna isn't easy as there is often no way uh, to conductively connect to RF output. All measurements on RF must be done in radiated mode. Uh, however, a ready-to-use solution doesn't require many RF measurements. A discrete solution requests much more effort, measurements, knowledge and equipment and many customers who just uh, want to acquire connectivity to, uh, do, to the device, do not even need uh, this equipment. Then a radio module must have a shielding. Uh, yeah, this is the uh, FCC requirement. And uh, A discrete solution uh, is a, let's say, there is a need uh, for RF external components. There is no need for RF external components 
and to deal with the settings. All is in. Therefore, a radio module is the fastest way to get the device uh, to the market. Uh, and the disadvantages. Uh, the radio module is great to be used for undemanding conditions, uh, not impacting, uh, sorry, not impacting embedded antenna. For specific conditions, this solution may not be usable, or some lower performance should be expected. Uh, to keep certification, the BOM and layout of module cannot be changed. In other words, uh, it uh, cannot be adjusted for external conditions. No modifications are allowed on the antenna side. For high volumes, this can be costly solution and it must be balanced between cost, time of development uh, phase, certification process, and yeah, etc. Okay, uh, several facts about the radio module. Uh, as it consists of uh, an antenna, uh, a radio module requests appropriate implementation. The antenna is a sensitive component, no matter if it's outside or inside the module. If possible, follow a manufacturer's recommendations from the application node. You will get closer to the optimal uh, solution and avoid the problems that I will outline uh, here. Um, the application node shows an optimal placement or set of possible placements. A difference uh, among the options lays in RF performance, while less recommended options are worse, but still usable. So, um, if the antenna is designed for corner placement, use the corner of your PCB. If the module incorporates uh, the antenna designed for uh, center edge placement, it is best to keep this location. Uh, we may also get some further information, such as size of the PCB or some warning about the influence of the metal and human body, but the background, how to deal with this information is often not given. So, even if you have no experience with a radio module, you should understand the basic ideas. And the basic recommendations and, uh, are, uh, are clear. Almost all modules integrates integrate the antenna that needs a clearance uh, below the antenna. It is a free of metal area and uh, this clearance must be preserved. As we uh, will see later, uh, you should consider the size of the PCB. Often it is a reference or evaluation board to which the antenna is adjusted. Uh, maybe it is a surprise for you, but uh, the shape uh, and the size of PCB uh, has certain effect on radio performance. It is especially about radiation efficiency, return loss, uh, resonance frequency shift, and change of radiation pattern. For a certain type of antenna, the PCB represents a ground plane needed for antenna operation. Metal objects uh, should be away from the module. We would like, uh, or, yeah, we would like to avoid any change of antenna structures, impact to antenna impedance, and uh, far field change. But it depends on size position uh, sorry, on size uh, of the PCB, position of the PCB, and the distance from the metal objects from the antenna. Uh, we met with various plastic housings. Uh, we will see some results with it uh, on further slides. A very unpleasant uh, case is uh, proximity of human body. 
I will show some results on uh, uh, on this on this case. Oh, what would happen if antenna uh, will be very close to human body? And uh, it is a quite often case. This little guide uh, could help you uh, to find out what is the main contributor to low performance of your radio and what to do when you are facing such issues. Yeah, so the first case uh, is size of motherboard. Um, all information given here is based on full 3D uh, electromagnetic simulation and it is related to exactly this case. Uh, it cannot be applied to else configuration, although the general principles are preserved. Yeah, so all these results are based on the model of the module operating in 2.4 gigahertz uh, band assembled on reference board. It is the case uh, the second case from the left side. The other boards preserves the module and particle change is depicted. Uh, this case considers a uh, change of motherboard size and uh, these were extended by size denominated in fraction of wavelength. Uh, and uh, report change in two directions so in X and Y axis. Size of the board influences the parameters of antenna and thus RF performance of the module. I suppose you may uh, know the terms like radiation efficiency and maximal gain of antenna. Losses are in dielectric and conductive materials of antenna and in parasitics of the matching uh, components. And to what we observed, uh, a change of radiation pattern, this one, uh, which uh, uh, expresses an amount of delivered power from the antenna into a particular direction. A reference board is uh, close to an omnidirectional case or omnidirectional pattern, as you want. Uh, so if uh, the depicted radiation patterns becomes uh, more yellow or green, uh, in some parts, the direction suffers uh, with, uh, the, with the power. So it's losing the power in that direction. Uh, there is a resonance frequency variation up to 65 megahertz. Radiated efficiency was almost no change, this parameter. Uh, but we noted variation of maximal gain of embedded antenna in 3 dB range. And omnidirectional pattern transforms into highly directional one, or fragmented one. OK, so uh, moreover, larger PCBs reports uh, higher gain, but this is only in particle direction. The others are suffering uh, of lack of, uh, lack of the gain. And a conclusion, the antenna maintains uh, impedance matching in the band and preserves radiation, uh, radiation efficiency. And the far field become more directional. Yeah, uh, let's look at the next case. It is a case uh, or change of ground plane only in X axis. We can observe here uh, not so huge change of radiation pattern, so we would uh, expect still the same amount of delivered power in all directions. But uh, there is a gain as well, which contributes on a delivered power. The radiation efficiency is also changing. That means that the, radiate, uh, that means that the radiated and accepted uh, power 
ratio differs. It can be a matter of antenna impedance as a conductive, as conductive and uh, dielectric losses should be almost the same. The basic facts about this case, uh, resonance frequency var varies uh, up to 50 megahertz. Radiated efficiency is quite stable, but with stronger variation when compared with the previous case. A surprising feature is that the small, the small board uh, acquired better efficiency, which makes me happy uh, as this case is a very often case for, for customer. Uh, maximal gain of embedded antenna is in 2 dB range. And omnidirectional pattern, as you can see here, isn't preserved, but uh, the change is negligible. We can also see it on the other side, uh, far side slide. Antenna for the largest plane here doesn't reach higher gain. Well, what we observed here, uh, or in a pre for the previous case, uh, for both sized extensions, but it keeps radiation efficiency and gain. And the far field is almost omnidirectional. For me, it can be one of the possible ways uh, where a larger board is needed. And a small conclusion, uh, the antenna maintenance impedance uh, matching in band with acceptable resonance uh, frequency change. And size of board has only a small impact to radiation efficiency and antenna preserves similar far field. Um, a different situation is for the uh, following cases. Uh, the PCB extension is made in Y axis. The radiation efficiency is heavily impacted it varies around the lower values. The same can be said for maximal gain, however it gets more uh, gain for the largest boards. What should not be overlooked in this, uh, uh, in this change, uh, the far field, uh, the far field shape, yeah, far field shape. It gets more directional character and becomes more fragmented, resulting in steep change in RSSI uh, uh, value while moving over or across the pattern cut. Uh, the smallest PCB has bad numbers. It is due to the not preserved so-called counterpoise of our antenna, which is critical size for PCB where antenna is able to operate. Let's summarize. Uh, resonance frequency variation up to 75 megahertz seems to be quite uh, too much. Uh, smallest board reach very low radiated efficiency. On contrary, of large boards that have enough radiation efficiency. The maximum gain of embedded antenna is varied in 4 dB uh, range and far field becomes more fragmented as we can see here uh, with extension uh, dimensions and this is what I told you a while before um, fragmented far field is quite small uh, uh, with uh, quite small uh, efficiency and increasing maximal gain due to changing directionality. I would point out uh, the interesting matter. The maximal gain is aiming toward the opposite side from the radio module. It, this could somewhat confuse and, uh, when, uh, when implementing a long, uh, long PCBs. The extended board in Y axis maintains impedance. Uh, in band, while possible worse numbers in dedicated band corners. Uh, floating radiation efficiency and maximal gain are depending on size. 
small size board has not enough counterpoise while uh, with low efficiency, and large boards have highly fragmented far field. Okay, next, uh, I need to skip some, uh, some slides. Uh, I need to be more quick. So I maybe present this. The usual case is placing a module to another location on a PCB. Data sheets often claims that uh, this is okay. Uh, so supposing no impact. But uh, we can say that uh, it isn't so much truth. The first case is placement uh, along the shorter side uh, of the PCB. The single case, uh, single cases we call it as a corner or center edge location. It should be selected based on the uh, antenna uh, type integrated in the module. It is visible that the re reference board uh, is likely selected not op optimally, reporting uh, less efficiency and gain. Although the return loss isn't visible here. Uh, Farfield is turning for all investigated cases, and Farfield is getting unfold. Radiation efficiency is quite flat. Bottom right, uh, you can see a graph for possible range uh, to see a difference between the cases. It is, uh, it is uh, calculated based on freeze equation for fixed output power 5 dBm and reference received power minus 70 dBm. Next slide, uh, yeah, fathers. Um, this is uh, about a placement uh, along the longer side of the motherboard. We can claim similar things uh, for this variance, but the dependency is much more visible. A reference board size is always uh, preserved, but the position of the module uh, is turned by 90 degrees. A small surprise. The module reports better efficiency, maximal gain and range when module is on the top. Uh, the worst result is for a bottom position. A return loss and the resonance frequency are quite stable. Far field is turning around and radiation efficiency is changing a lot. We can see that the maximal gain has different efficiency, uh, or different uh, values, sorry, maximal gain has different uh, values, and the bottom right is a, again the graph for a range that reports significant difference between simulated cases. And a short conclusion to this case, best to keep an uh, original location and uh, module pos position at the same time. If needed to place, uh, place it else, use the shorter edge. Uh, resonance uh, frequency is kept inside the band, and the lowest performance is for bottom left side. Yeah, 50. Mm, I must skip the sorry for this. Maybe uh, one case I will comment. We simulated uh, cases with metal object nearby the antenna. Uh, in sizes selected in, uh, again in fraction of a wavelength. The metal sheet is positioned parallel, in this case, to the main board. And results? Resonance frequency is almost kept the same. Smaller sheet becomes a part of the antenna, impacting anti antenna impedance, and uh, all parameters are getting worse. A uh, larger sheet behave as a reflector, uh, so it makes the antenna very directional. So it concerns electromagnetic field, and uh, the antenna reports high gain and efficiency, but only in one direction. 
So unfortunately, then this arrangement lost omnidirectional pattern. I would point out a range calculation. Here is a huge improvement for directional cases. I must skip some uh, other cases that are concerns to different position of the reference board with the module uh, to, the, to the sheet. But uh, yeah, as you can see, very similar case, case is this one. Uh, to the pr uh, to the previous one, and this is uh, uh, let's say not uh, impacting so much. I would like to show you uh, not plastic. In this case, it is a plastic housing and human body. Um, now we will investigate what happen if the module would. Uh, be exposed to human body, you probably uh, know uh, it has a huge impact. So wearables or handheld devices should be adjusted for these aspects. Okay, so the goal is human body touching the plastic housing and uh, everything is impacted. Resonance frequency is out of the desired band Radiation efficiency is decreased a lot, at as same as uh, maximal gain. Far field shape uh, is lost. The omnidirectional pattern is lost. And what concerns to maximal range? It has decreased a lot. Only in only the xz xz plane position is a bit is a bit better. But you should remember that uh, it is not able to propagate through the human body at all. Remember, a human body significantly detunes the antenna mostly when aligned to a direction of propagation uh, and uh, linked with a impact to efficiency and gain. A radiation pattern shape signi significantly depends uh, on position. If the device is handheld or wearable, uh, try, to, uh, try to create enough spacing. If it is not possible to have a spacing, antenna will suffer from human body presence. You must count with losses or use a custom designed antenna or even discrete solution. Uh, yeah. I have three minutes, so uh, we are at the end, uh, and I guess a little reminder of what we have learned today. When searching for the fastest way uh, to get uh, connected uh, using the radio module is your way. When facing some issues, as discussed here, like metal objects, human body, you should avoid them or at least mitigate an impact. If you are not confident about no issue of this kind, just use it. Some recommendation at the end. Uh, if you are interested in modules, the basic uh, is to carefully read a documentation and application note there is useful information given. Based on what you have, um, uh, you have uh, learned, you should be able to assess possible faults in applying the module. If you have any doubts uh, uh, about your implementation, do not hesitate to ask. We are for you here. And we will be glad uh, to consult your design if you would, if you would like, uh, we may give you a priceless advice for free. Okay, so, and that's all for the, today. I have no time. I hope you enjoy the presentation. And if you have any question or comments, uh, we can take it here or discuss them later on ST Microelectronics booth at hall in hall 4A. So, thank you.